This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Is your sketchbook getting you down? Are you feeling overwhelmed at all the blank space? Are you being too perfectionistic, not having fun? Well, maybe this video is for you. I want to talk about how to have more fun in your sketchbook. I filled a lot of sketchbooks in my days, many, many sketchbooks. I have so many sketchbook tours on my channel and I always like talking about them and just like ways to approach them. I have a lot of videos on how to improve your sketchbooks, how to fill them, how to sketch more freely, but I don't really have any videos about having fun in your sketchbook. I feel like when we were all beginner artists, art always felt more fun somehow. It was freeing, exciting. There were so many possibilities because we were just beginning our art journey. We weren't like bogged down by any of the like stressful parts of, of making art. We were just like new beginner artists and just really excited at all the possibilities. I think as artists age and improve, more stress comes with that because the more you learn, the more serious you get about art and then it starts to become a chore and all the fears start to set in. You might start comparing yourself to other artists and wonder why your art can't look like theirs. You experience art block for the first time and get so overwhelmingly frustrated with your art, you get burnt out. There's so many things that happen as you start to practice your craft more and more. And I think it's really easy to lose that spark that you had when you were a beginner. There's so many things that can stunt our creativity and the joy we used to find in creating. So I wanted to approach this topic and give some advice for how I try to bring joy back into my sketchbooking and my illustration process as a whole. And I feel like lately I've not been sketching much because I've just been doing a lot of other things. And I feel like this is such a common thing that happens. Like I remember being a beginner artist and just like being so excited to draw all the time. I would wake up thinking about my sketchbook, go to sleep thinking about it, be excited to flip through all the art I've done and be excited to fill the rest of it and get a new one eventually. It was just so much fun and somehow that gets lost along the way. So maybe this video can sort of help to bring a bit of that spark back, a bit of that joy and help you to have fun in your sketchbook again. I have three main points to go over. The first one is get addicted. When I think back to the times I was having the most fun in my sketchbook, those were the times where I was sketching nearly every day. And this can be a hard thing to do, especially when you become an adult and you have other responsibilities and you don't always have the time or the energy or the mental energy to be sketching every day. But sometimes I just think back to those nights where you were like so excited to draw, you draw something, go to sleep, wake up thinking about your sketchbook, excited to get started again for the day. I have so many fond memories like that as a kid and a beginner artist when I was just getting into drawing and trying to improve and just like being excited to create cool art. It just felt kind of magical. and. I think I have managed to recreate this feeling a couple of times um, and those are always the times where I am sketching a lot. If you're drawing all the time, you're never really rusty and it's really easy to pick up your sketchbook and continue where you left off. It's almost like an addiction, but a fulfilling and productive one. It's like when you get into that groove and you draw every day, it, it kind of feels like second nature and you start to think about your sketchbook more and you start to sort of get addicted to drawing in it. And I remember this happening in art school. There was one assignment where we had to make our own sketchbooks. And this was one of those times where I was super into sketchbooking because I made the book myself and I felt a huge attachment to it. And I just really wanted to like fill this handmade sketchbook. And I feel like everyone else in the class was like really inspired at this time. Well, maybe not everyone, but like I remember a couple people were like, I I'm just addicted to, to drawing in this. It's so fun because like I made it myself and now I just like want to fill it with art. And the good thing about making your own sketchbook is that you can customize the paper, the size of the book, the cover, you can customize everything about it. And it just really makes you feel more invested in your sketchbook. I highly recommend making your own. It's super fun. Oftentimes we stop sketching because it's been too long since the last session and the longer the break is, the less motivated you feel and the less attachment you have to your sketchbook. This is also why some people never finish sketchbooks and start new ones over and over. They want that like fresh start feeling and to feel attached to their sketchbook again. I would highly recommend to finish the sketchbooks you start 
because it's really um it's it's a really great feeling to flip through your sketchbook and see all the finished art. So my number one tip for finding joy with sketching again is to sketch a lot more and try to build a routine out of it because if you're drawing every day it's easier to draw. And this all this doesn't really apply to like those moments where you're really burnt out or those moments where you're like having severe art block or like mental health problems. It can be really hard to consistently do creative things during these times. But if you're like generally feeling okay about it, try to draw every day and just like keep working on your sketchbook every day. Building that like routine sets in motion this like, this like motivated feeling towards your sketchbook and you never really feel rusty anymore and like I I sometimes find myself waking up and like thinking about my sketchbook and looking at the stuff I drew yesterday and getting excited and like filling more pages and like once you get the ball rolling the ball kind of keeps rolling and I think it can be hard to get it started but if you do you can really get addicted to your sketchbook. These are the times where I feel the most joy in sketchbooking and when I'm having the most fun. Now for a break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can build your own customized website and websites are so useful for anyone with a small business or any kind of side hustle or passion project. The best way to begin your website creation is by choosing a template and they have so many beautiful templates to choose from and you don't have to stick to the template. You can actually change so many things about it like the fonts and the colors and the overall theme. That's what I did for my site and I also made sure to add a gallery. Their portfolios and galleries feature is really great for artists because it's very important to have a portfolio as an artist so everyone can see all your images displayed together nicely and their automatic image scaling make sure all your photos appear beside each other nicely and you don't have to manually size them yourself they are automatically sized which is really nice if this sounds interesting to you go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash jellarts and you can get 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain now what are you going to actually draw on your sketchbook what i think the best way to have the most fun is to draw what you want to draw not what you think you should be drawing this video isn't about improving your art, it's about having fun again. It's hard to have fun when you're drawing really difficult things over and over and getting frustrated. Like some people love studying and learning how to draw new things and this can be their form of fun. I'm like this sometimes too. It's always good to learn new things, but if you wanna have fun, you wanna do what you feel like doing and what you think will be fun in that moment. Like some days you have to be selfish. You have to draw things for yourself. One of my professors in art school called this procrasta drawing, which is basically when you draw something you've drawn a hundred times before, just to feel a sense of accomplishment for completing something you know you're good at. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing though. I think it was presented as a bad thing, but I think even if you've drawn something a hundred times before, each time you draw it again, you might discover a new way to approach it. And each time you draw it, you're still filling your sketchbook and you're still keeping that ball rolling. For instance, I draw a lot of frogs. I draw so many frogs. I draw them all the time because one, they're fun. Two, they're a really good warm up. And three, I'm always trying to find new cute ways to draw them. So if you like drawing like cottage core, frogs, mushroom critters and trees, go for it. Don't feel guilty for not practicing the hard stuff. Like for me, I don't know, hands, poses, backgrounds, cars, equipment, like less organic shapes, perspective, stuff like that. If you never get to draw something for yourself, then it will be even more difficult to broaden your horizons and learn the things that you struggle with too. I definitely have days where I'm like, I really wanna, wanna study things and learn how to draw things today. And that day it's really, really fun. And there's other days where I'm like, I just wanna draw what I know and it's just as fun too. Also draw in the style you want. I went through a phase where I was forcing myself to draw semi-realistically because I thought that it would be like more acceptable. I think it was because I heard one of my high school art teachers say something about anime being like terrible, like horrible or something. And like that's sort of the style I was drawing in at that time. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna draw anime style anymore. I'm gonna switch completely. And I really forced myself to like go away from simple things and tried to like add more like, I tried to like get a more complicated and more like closer to real life style. 
And it took me a long time to shake this off. Once I embraced my like cartoony style a bit more and allowed myself to draw things more simplified, I really started to find my own style that I actually liked. And it was the same professor that um, said, was talking about procrasta drawing that also was like pushing us all to find our own style. And like, if you draw cute things, draw them even cuter. If you draw like scary things, draw it even more scary. Like he wanted us to lean into what we already were naturally doing. And I think that's a really good thing. If you're trying to be something that you're not, you'll just cause yourself to struggle even more. You have to let yourself be the kind of artist you want to be and draw what you want. It would be boring if every single artist drew the same way. That's why we follow a bunch of different artists on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. It's because everyone's different and it's just cool to see how people do things differently. I used to think that not doing realistic art would mean that people wouldn't think I'm a good artist because oftentimes non-artists view cartoony stuff as easy and realism or fine art as real art. It's important to just try not to care about this. You can't please everyone and other fellow artists will recognize what you're trying to go for. If you like realism, then do it. If you don't, then don't do it. It's definitely a useful study tool to learn how to draw things and then to be able to stylize them how you want, but it doesn't have to be the main focus of your illustrations. The point of art is to express things how you see them, not to please other people or to prove something. I'm still trying to let go of this idea though. It's kind of hard because like for a while there, I was like, I'm going to draw semi-realism because I feel like it's a little more acceptable. It's like, it like quote, proves that you like know how to draw people. But like, I don't know. I always feel like every time I do something very simple and cartoony and like, it's just an animal, people will think like, oh, they don't know how to draw people. And I don't know why that matters. And I don't know why I subconsciously think that this matters when I really do believe that it doesn't matter and you should draw whatever you want. My third tip for having fun in your sketchbook again is texture, mark making, and colors. I think drawing a lot is good, drawing in the style you want to draw in is good, but also exploring all the ways you can use colors and texture and different mark making is such a fun thing to explore. It can really be like a mindless activity. If you don't feel like actually drawing things, you can like explore texture. This is something I overlooked for a while, honestly, but in the last year or so, I've been realizing just how fun it is to explore texture. Style is one thing, but finding your own way to color things in your own unique textures that you want to bring into your art is a whole other fun journey. And it's still something I've like just dipped my toes into and been trying to think about a little more consciously and like expanding the brushes I use in Procreate and getting like new art supplies to use. When you think about it, there's really so many possibilities. Like when you combine like style and like what you're drawing and then how you actually like make marks on your page to depict what it is you want to draw. There's so many different ways you can make art and it's it's just really fun to think about this and to let yourself explore in your sketchbook. Texture, mark making, and color are really fun things to explore. And when I say mark making, I mean literally like the tool you have and how you make marks on the page with it. Like some people will press hard, some people will press lightly, some people will do like fast like hatching, some people will like color back and forth. Like it's literally talking about how you make marks on your page because everyone does this slightly differently and there's so many different marks you can make with like paint and pencil crayon and pastels and watercolor. There's so many different ways you can use each of these media and you can really like discover your own unique way of working. And I just find this a really, really exciting thought because you never know what you could discover about your own style and about how you might want to make art in the future. I, I feel like I have this idea of the kind of art I want to make and I still keep trying to like get there, but I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but it's really fun to just keep experimenting a little and try to get closer and closer to what it is I'm, I think I'm going for in terms of like texture and like the mood I want my pieces to have and all that kind of stuff. I hope this video helped you think of some ways to have more fun in your sketchbook because you can fill a sketchbook, you can like draw more, more freely, 
but how to actually have fun and bring that like joy for art back can be really tricky. But I really hope that these ideas have helped you. And if you have any other ways that you know work for you, please leave them in the comments because I know a lot of people read the comments and like to share advice with each other. It's a really cool part of my channel and my videos when I see people giving helpful advice in the comments. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one.